Hi there, I'm Alexandra with Artoix Canada and welcome to another edition of Artoix Canada at Home. Thanks for joining us for Foam Clay 101. Lumen's Workshop Foam Clay is an air dry clay that dries to one third of its weight. It comes in gray, white, and black. Lumen's Workshop Foam Clay starts off as a nice, soft, smooth clay. To work with it, all you need is some water and anything that you have on hand. I like to use spoons, tin foil, sculpting tools for icing, and anything else that I can get my hands on. If you are using wooden tools, however, make sure to moisten the tool before you work on the foam clay, otherwise the foam clay will stick to anything that is fibrous, including paper, cardboard, and wooden tools. Air makes your foam dry out. That's what it's intended to do because it's an air dry clay. When your container has air in it, all that air is helping dry out your clay. To help keep your clay nice and fresh, simply get some plastic film such as a saran wrap, squish your clay down and press the skin of plastic over top of your foam clay. Now, the surface of your foam clay is protected from all the air inside the container. And you can store it away without worry that it'll dry out on you. Working time is approximately 25 minutes depending on the humidity of your home. If you have a very dry home, then your working time will be shortened. If your home is relatively humid, it will be somewhat longer. If your foam clay starts to feel dry, all you need to do is just grab a little bit of water and moisten the surface again. If your foam clay starts to feel too firm as you're working with it, simply dip some water onto your fingers and thoroughly mix it back into the clay to get it even softer. You can add excess amounts of water to create sculpting pastes as well, which are really great for creating textures over top of various surfaces. Drying time can take anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks, depending on the thickness of your piece. When working with foam clay, drying time is greatly reduced the thinner your piece is. A thicker piece will take longer to dry, but a thinner piece will take a much shorter amount of time to dry. If you wish to speed up the drying time of your piece, you can put it in front of a fan, but not a heater. Heating it will not make it dry any faster. What it will do is it will make the air inside it bubble up and make it look all crazy and bubbly and warbly looking. You can also create your own little micro chamber of super, super dry air. Grab yourself a Tupperware that's big enough to fit the piece that you need. Fill it with a combination of cornstarch, baby powder, talcum powder, silica gel packets, and even rice. All those are designed to suck moisture out of the piece that you have. And you can take your piece, simply lay it in, and that way it's not going to deform in any way because it's in a nice formed area, specially made for it. Seal it back up and stow it away. After a few days, this is going to suck more moisture out of your piece much, much faster than your regular environment. One question that we've had is, does the foam clay shrink? The answer is yes, but only a small amount. The shrink rate is approximately 5 to 7% depending on the ambient humidity of your environment. As time goes on, your piece will become firmer. When it's originally wet, it's very, very squishy. As time goes on, the foam will become very, very firm and will lose flexibility. To help retain some moisture and retain its flexible properties, seal your piece with FlexBond. FlexBond is a two-in-one primer and sealer that is awesome for foam and foam clay. And you can also mix it into your paints to give them that additional flexible property, whereas other acrylics without this special blend might crack. Here's a piece that's been drying for several months. When bent, it snaps. Meanwhile, these little leaves have been drying for even longer, but they are sealed with FlexBond before painting. And as you can see, these little tiny fragile looking guys are perfectly happy and nice and strong. Once your piece is completely dry, if it is not quite the shape that you want it, 
you can heat form it the way you do EVA foam. In this case, when this piece dried, it warped a little bit. Now I can heat form it by heating it up with a heat gun. Through the magic of heat, now my piece is much flatter. Unlike EVA foam that tends to shrink and melt when it comes into contact with a high heat, such as a hot wire or a wood burning tool, the foam clay doesn't melt. So something like a wood burning tool or a hot knife used to cut polystyrene foam won't be effective. When you want perfectly clean, crisp edges in a very sculpty shape, they don't always start out that way. This is where some sandpaper is all you need. I like to use 220 grit. Don't use your scissors on sandpaper because it can make them dull. With a little bit of sandpaper, rough edges and unblended seams will disappear as if they were perfect from the get-go. It takes approximately two days for the surface to become dry enough for priming and painting, but we recommend giving your piece as long as possible to dry before you start painting it. Sealing your foam clay with a product like Flex Bond or a rubberized spray such as Plastidip protects your piece and makes sure that your surface is ready for painting and that your acrylic paint will stick flawlessly. Plastidip does a great job of enhancing textures if you have any on your piece. Plastidip is a rubberized spray that needs 24 hours to cure before painting. Please do it outside as it is very toxic to breathe in and it is available at most hardware stores. If flexibility is an important part of your piece, we recommend FlexBond. FlexBond is great for sealing small pieces of foam clay onto larger pieces such as this mask. Each one of these pieces was individually sculpted on a flat surface, contact cemented on once they were dry, and then the whole thing is sealed with FlexBond. This means that the mask can be flexed, but the tiny pieces will not come off. When flex bonding, make sure to use a soft bristle brush. If you use a brush with stiff bristles, it'll leave more brush marks. Flex bond is very thick. That means that as you brush it on, it might leave more brush marks than you intend. If that's the case, you can thin it out with a little bit of water or apply it in a small area, then take your brush, dip it in water, and gently in a crosswise direction, glide it over the freshly painted flex bond. This thins the top coat of the flex bond so that it self levels. After flex bonding, if you still notice some flaws, simply wet your finger. Make sure you don't use too much water because that will actually cause drip marks. And have a sponge readily available so you can sop up any extra water that might be dripping.
Aside from painting with acrylic paint and spray paint, you can also pre-color your foam clay with food dye, with a little bit of acrylic paint, or even fabric dye. This allows you to take your white clay and by mixing in a little of the rich liquid dye, you've got clay that is the color of the dye itself. You don't need a lot, which is fantastic. So that way you can pre-color a whole jar of the clay so that you can pre-color your pieces so that way you can sculpt pieces without having to worry about getting color inside tight places. Do yourself a favor and until the color is well blended into the clay, put on a pair of gloves or place the clay inside a Ziploc bag and squish the clay through the Ziploc bag until all the dye is absorbed into the clay. Once the clay is blended with the dye, you can then take it out and handle it without it rubbing off. This clay was colored with acrylic paint by blending it in in small sections at a time. I added more paint to get a more potent color, but I stirred it off with just a little bit of color in it, which allowed me to get a very beautiful gradient and color into tiny places that would be very hard to paint into. Heads up, when you're using acrylic paint, you want to use a little bit. The more you add, the more it'll change the composition of the clay itself until the clay becomes very tough and rubbery and it won't sculpt anymore. Avoid using metallics to color your clay. Metallic paints contain plasticizers, which turn the clay rubbery very, very quickly. The clay will not become metallic as your paint. Rather, the paint will just get absorbed by the clay and you'll just end up with a hard rubbery mess that is not sculptable. Will it stick? Foam clay can stick to many surfaces, especially if they're porous. It'll stick really well to wood, cardboard, and paper, so watch out where you keep your reference pictures. If you're sticking your foam clay onto pre-existing EVA foam, simply wet a, your finger a little bit and wet the surface of the foam. You can then sculpt your detail over top of the EVA foam. The water is what makes the foam clay stick to the EVA foam. That way, if you want to sculpt directly onto your piece, you don't need adhesive. If you have small pieces that need to be sculpted away from your main piece, simply contact cement them on when you're ready, and then seal with flex bond to make sure that those tiny pieces never pop off. You can use silicone molds to sculpt repeated pieces. For details on how to do this, check out our video down below. There are many different kinds of items you can put underneath your foam clay for structural support. Tin foil, wire, paper forms and paper towels, cardboard, even pool noodles, even thrown out packaging. Whatever you're using as your armature, if you intend for it to stay within the form, don't worry about covering it up. If you need it to come out, you want to make sure that between your armature and the foam clay, you provide some kind of barrier. Check out our video on how we made these bowsette horns that once they were done are completely hollow. Tin foil holds a really great shape and it's nice and light, so there's no need to scrunch it up to add to the weight. Once you have a form, simply take thin layers of the foam clay and cover it over top. For crazy wild shapes that are very organic, you can use spray insulation foam as a great base. Unfortunately, once you cut into the insulation foam, you'll notice that it's really, really full of bubbles and holes. Foam clay does a wonderful job of filling these in without adding weight. Once filled in and dried, can then be sanded to give your piece a beautiful, smooth finish. One question that we've been asked is, can we use foam clay to create prosthetics? The answer is yes, but 
You cannot use foam clay anywhere inside the mouth, inside your nose, or inside your ears. Once your foam clay prosthetic is fully sealed, you can use spirit gum, double-sided tape, and other skin-safe adhesives such as Prosade to glue it onto your skin. Make sure that you use only cosmetic skin-safe adhesives to glue things onto your skin, and don't use super glue, white glue, or contact cement, and especially not hot glue. Cosplay is fun, but it doesn't need to hurt.